The world of assessment is changing. So how do we monitor and track progress and achievement in the broad general education? In 2002, the Scottish Executive launched a consultation exercise, the National Debate on Education, to determine what was working well and what needed to change in Scottish education. It asked, how could we educate Scotland's children to ensure that they had the skills needed for life and work in the 21st century? As a result, a curriculum review group was established, which identified key principles to be applied in the redesign of the 3 to 18 curriculum. A broader range of learning, more engaging and relevant learning experiences and assessment which was clearly designed to support learning were needed to ensure that Scotland's children and young people were equipped to participate fully in life and work in an increasingly globalised society. Consequently, Curriculum for Excellence provides the foundation on which our education system can develop confident individuals, effective contributors, successful learners and responsible citizens with the skills necessary to continue learning throughout their life. Building the Curriculum 5, a framework for assessment, provides key guidance on assessment within Curriculum for Excellence. It makes clear that if we want these fundamental aspirations to become a reality for all, then the clear connections between the content of the curriculum, learning and teaching methodologies, and assessment need to be recognised and fully integrated into the planning of learning. Without the integration of assessment in the day-to-day -day life of the classroom, it is difficult to make regular, valid, professional judgments of how well our learners are making progress across the range of learning. Similarly, without putting learners themselves at the centre of the assessment process, children and young people will not develop an understanding of where they are in their learning and what they need to do next to progress. So, to enable children and young people to develop the four capacities, opportunities to demonstrate what they learn need to be thoroughly thought through at the planning stage. Assessment cannot be a bolt-on, something done to passive learners at the end of a piece of learning. Instead, assessment should provide active learners with a range of opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis to demonstrate through what they say, write, make and do their development of knowledge, understanding, skills, attributes and capabilities. We want to inspire our learners to contribute confidently and effectively to the story of their own learning. Crucially, this involves learner conversations, dialogue between learners themselves and between them and their teachers or key adult, parents and others involved in their education. Practitioners will also share and develop through conversation with one another their understanding of the progress their learners are making. Conversations run in parallel. What we say and hear in one affects what we say and our understanding of what we hear in another. In these ongoing conversations about learning, we must think of assessment as valid evaluation of learning based on reliable evidence generated in a variety of ways throughout a learning experience. So what does all this look like in practice? Firstly, to ensure learners enjoy their entitlement to a broad general education, practitioners plan rich learning experiences using the experiences and outcomes and taking account of learners' prior learning. Discussion among practitioners and their partners as they plan learning helps them decide on why, what and how they will teach and what evidence they will have that learning has taken place. As a consequence, practitioners become more confident in making valid professional judgments about how a child or young person is progressing. Next, practitioners share with learners what they should know, understand or be able to do by the end of a learning experience. The focus must be on what is to be learned rather than the task leading to the learning. To know that these learning intentions have been achieved, practitioners and learners create success criteria at the outset and refer to these throughout the learning experience. Learners are at the centre of learning as they shape and use learning intentions and success criteria in dialogue with their teacher and each other. Giving learners responsibility for their own learning is central to the assessment process. Through these discussions, learners will understand the purpose of the learning and be motivated by that. Learner conversations also help them to know how they are progressing and what their next steps in learning will be. Rich learning experiences provide a variety of sources and types of valid evidence of the range of learning related directly to the learning intentions and success criteria. 
For example, evidence might come from observing learners carrying out specific tasks, performing, delivering oral presentations, participating in group discussions, creating artwork, or from other reports, projects, or other products. Oral, written and audiovisual evidence created by learners and information provided by parents, other learners or other staff about a learner's achievement are all forms of naturally occurring assessment evidence taken from day-to-day -day learning and teaching. Through dialogue, learners recognise their latest and best evidence of learning. They engage more and in more depth with the profiling process and gathering evidence for their profile. Because practitioners have fuller and more valid evidence on how learners are progressing, they can track progress confidently, both within and across Curriculum for Excellence levels. And of course, learning is not confined to the playroom or classroom, but takes place in the four contexts of learning. As well as the evidence provided within the eight curriculum areas, evidence of learning can come through making connections across the curriculum areas in interdisciplinary learning through opportunities to participate in the ethos and life of the school, and through opportunities for personal achievement, both within and out with the immediate school environment. Regardless of the specific context of any learning, the principles of planning and assessing rich learning experiences are the same. All contexts provide a variety of sources and types of valid evidence to track progress. So how do practitioners arrive at a holistic judgment that a learner has achieved a level? Having used the experiences and outcomes to plan learning, practitioners will know when learners have achieved a breadth of learning across almost all the experiences and outcomes in a given curriculum area and have met the learning demands presented by increasingly challenging experiences. Through planned rich learning experiences, practitioners will recognise when learners are applying their skills in more unfamiliar situations without support from scaffolding. Drawing on guidance supports practitioners in these processes. Moderation among practitioners at all stages of planning and of learning and teaching involves professional dialogue with colleagues both within and out with their own establishment. Moderation is informed by referencing a range of learner evidence from practitioners' own classrooms. This leads practitioners to be confident when reporting on progress to learners themselves, other practitioners, members of the senior leadership team and parents. When the reporting process is ongoing, through the regular sharing of evidence with parents, there is no need for a lengthy written report at the end of the session, as all involved will be confident how the learner is progressing in their learning and will know how to support them in the learning journey. To ensure that rich learning experiences are quality assured at all stages of the learning journey, it is vital that at points of transition, practitioners come together to moderate evidence of learning. Through this, they will be confident that they are building on prior learning and, ultimately, in decisions about the most appropriate qualifications learners should progress to and at what levels in the senior phase. As a result of the effective transition through all stages of the learning journey, learners develop a profile of their latest and best achievements. Their progress is monitored and tracked and, when necessary, appropriate interventions taken to ensure that they are realising their fullest potential. Ultimately, in these ways, the learner will have become a confident individual, effective contributor, successful learner and responsible citizen with the skills, attributes and capabilities needed to equip them for positive, sustained destinations in learning, life and work.